Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the elimination method versus the substitution method for solving system of equations. Which one's best and when and why and how? We'll find out right now. So first, as a quick recap, elimination method is where we have something like this for a system of equations and then I'd multiply the top one by probably negative three so that when I distribute the negative three to every term it gets me negative three x minus six y equals negative eighteen and that way when I combine these two equations it gets me zero x minus eleven y equals negative twenty two and I can easily solve for x and y from there and then if you remember substitution method look something like this. Let's say I have these system of equations. And the goal is basically to solve for one of your variables. In this case, y is already solved for. So then you plug in y, really 2x minus 2, in for y right there, giving me x plus 2, and then y gets replaced with 2x minus 2 equals 6. And then you distribute the 2 to both terms, and from here the rest of the problem is easy. So that's how we do elimination method and substitution method. But now let's answer the question of when to use each. And you probably already realize what the answer is. I like to use elimination method when my equations are lined up like this. X and Y are on one side and the numbers on the other. That's when we want to use elimination. And we want to use substitution whenever one of my variables, like this bottom equation, is already solved for one of the variables. And so now what we're going to do for the rest of the time, we're just going to look at a couple of system of equation problems, and I want you to do them. I want you to pause the video, I want you to try it on your own, using either elimination or substitution, whichever one you think will be best. So for this first one, I have the first equation, 3x minus 5y equals 4, and negative x plus y equals negative 2. Don't just tell me which method is better, elimination or substitution, actually solve it. So go ahead, pause the video, and unpause it when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We have the option of either canceling for x or y. In my opinion, x is going to be easier here. I'm just going to multiply the bottom equation by 3, which would give me negative 3x plus 3y equals negative 6. And then I'm just going to rewrite the top equation, 3x minus 5y equals 4. Then we combine the two by adding them together. 3x minus 3x cancels, negative 5y plus 3y is negative 2y, and 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 2, and we'll get y equals 1, which is not the final answer, because we still need x. If you want to solve for x, you just have to plug in y equals 1 into either of these two original equations. I think the bottom one will be easier. So negative x plus y is 1 equals negative 2. I just need to subtract 1 from both sides, so negative x equals negative 3, and then get rid of the negative signs because they cancel, and we get x equals positive 3, y equals 1. You can either write it like this, or you can write it as a coordinate point, 3 comma 1. That would be correct as well. Now we're just going to look at one more for today. Don't just think that this one's going to be substitution. I might be trying to trick you, but we have x equals negative 4y plus 5, and y equals 3x plus 11. So go ahead, pause the video, try it on your own, and when you're ready to see the answer, unpause. Okay, so here we go. I tried to trick you by solving for both x and y, and maybe that did trick you, but substitution method is definitely going to be the best method here. Although to be perfectly honest, if you really wanted to do elimination, you could add 4y to the top equation and subtract 3x from the bottom equation, and then you can now do elimination method. Technically, we can always do that, but I'm not going to do that for this problem. Instead, since both x and y are solved for, I get to choose if I want to plug in x right here, or if I want to plug in y right there. Since it doesn't matter, I'll plug in x right there. So in other words, y equals 3, and then going in for x, is going to be my negative 4y plus 5, and then don't forget the plus 11. Now I need to distribute the 3 to both terms, 
So y equals negative 12 y plus 15 plus 11. So now we're almost done. Add 12 y to both sides because we want to get all the y on one side. So 13 y equals 15 plus 11 is 26. Then we just divide by 13. That does go in evenly. We're going to get y equals 2. And again, we're not done. To solve for x, now we just have to plug in y into either equation. I like plugging in the top one. So that we get x equals negative 4 times 2 plus 5. Notice I just plugged in 2 for y. And then x equals negative 8 plus 5, which is going to be negative 3. So final answer, x equals negative 3, y equals positive 2, or again, as a coordinate point, negative 3, comma 2. So that's it for this problem. Hopefully now you're feeling more confident with choosing between elimination and substitution. Sometimes your teacher makes you do one or the other, so you don't even have a choice. But, you know, if you get a choice, this is how we do it. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.